Hey everyone, I hope you guys are having a great day. Welcome back to another Web Dev Junkie video. So someone on my Discord channel or Discord server asked if I can give like a five minute high level overview of how you can potentially implement JWT inside your application. Uh, if you don't know what JWT is, it's just another way to basically secure your application so that users can log in and also hit your APIs and your API can check, is this who they say they are? So I have a sequence diagram that I created for this little tutorial which has three rows, I guess you can call them, or three columns. The first column is the UI, so anything related to the browser would be in this. The second one is the API, so anything related to your, let's say, Node API, your Python API, your PHP API would be here. And then finally, you have your database um, column, right? So this could be MongoDB, this could be MySQL, this could be whatever database you want to basically store some type of user information. So let's just walk through the flow. Usually you have a login page. So the user would come here and type in a username and a password or an email and a password and click a login button. And when they do that, you probably want to do some type of post request to an authentication login endpoint, right? So this is what this means. This means do a post request to a login endpoint. Now, once you hit that endpoint, what your API needs to do is fetch the user from the database using the email that you provided in that form and then you want to check if the password that the user sent in matches the password that was found in the database, right? You might want to use bcrypt and you do a salt and a hash on the password so you don't actually store passwords in your database. But if the passwords don't match, you probably want to return an error to the user. In the, in the, the UI, you could show like an alert or maybe some error text. But if the passwords do match, that's when you basically want to sign the user object that was returned from the database. You can sign whatever you want, just any type of JSON that comes back or data that comes back, you can sign it using like JSON Web Tokens package if you're using Node. Um, but the main thing is you want to store whatever information in that JWT that can help you with authentication, right? So that usually always includes a user ID, but it also might include a role, right? So if you log in as a user who happens to be an admin, well, you might want to put the user ID and a role of admin inside your JWT so that later on when people try to hit your endpoints, you can check this user is an admin. Do they even have access to this endpoint, etc. So with that being said, you have a JWT now, right? That's just a, a string of characters that you pass between the front end and the back end. And we are going to set this on a cookie, right? You don't necessarily have to. You can put this in local storage if you want to, but everyone argues that HTTP only cookies that are secure is the best way to do it. I'm not going to get into that argument, but this is a good way to do it. Basically put your token inside a cookie, which would uh, pretty much be on the header um, sent back to the UI. So after this whole flow, you do a post request to the login page. It does some stuff. You get back and then you'll get back a set cookie header in the response. Okay. So at that point, the browser sees that header and it's going to basically put that cookie somewhere inside the browser for your URL, okay? So at that point, any future request that comes from that URL from your browser is going to also forward that JWT cookie. Okay, so I would definitely recommend reading up on cookies and understanding how they work, but really it's just something that's automatically sent to your backend in a header so that your backend can actually decode it and use whatever information they want. All right, so at that point, you might have an application that you want to maybe upload some notes. Let's say you're doing a to-do list application. Well, the browser could type into a note input and then click on an add note button. At that point, you're going to basically do another post request to a slash notes endpoint. Um, and again, since the cookie was set on the browser, it's going to also include that cookie information on a header on the request. So at that point, your backend server can look at the header, take the cookie and then also grab the token that you stored in it. Okay, so read the cookie, get the JWT. Now you probably want to add some error handling um, cases here. So if there is no header or there is no token on the header, you probably want to return an error code back to the UI so they can show some type of error on the UI. Maybe it's like an alert or a modal um, or just redirect them to a login page because there's something wrong with the token. But if everything is good, if the token is in the cookie and in the header, you can then verify it. So again, you're going to verify this token using a secured password that basically is set in an environment variable on the server. So when you host your server, you're going to set some type of secret key that you're going to use for signing, which was done up here, and then also verifying your tokens. 
All right, so at this point, we verify the token. And again, if the token was expired, or if the token was invalid, we want to send an error back to the UI. Maybe you can redirect them to the login page because they have logged out by that point. Um, but if everything is good, if the token's good and they are who they say they are, you might want to check if the role is what it needs to be for your endpoint. You can then do whatever you want, right? So you can use the user ID that's inside the token to fetch maybe all the notes for the user or upload a note for that user or something. Pretty much whatever you want to do, right? So at this point, at this section after the dotted line, you've pretty much verified that this person is actually supposed to be able to access this endpoint. They are who they say they are. We verified the token. And now you can do whatever computation you want, grab data from the database. And then finally, you're going to send that data back to the user in the UI where you can kind of display that. All right, so that is kind of like the high level, really short view of how you might want to implement JWT in your application. Now, I didn't touch on refresh tokens. I might make a video after this to kind of explain how you can do a refresh token so that the user can basically regenerate um, your access tokens. Uh, but we will save that for another topic because that's a whole nother five minute tutorial probably. So hopefully this helps you understand at a higher level how you might want to implement JWT in your application and the flow of which how it kind of goes between your UI and your application and how you might want to use your database to fetch data and store data based on if the user is valid or not. All right, so for that Discord user, if there's anything that I left out or you want me to expand upon, I would be willing to try to learn more about this and make a video about it. But I hope this was a good overview of how you might want to implement JWT inside your application. All right, happy coding. Have a good day.